What's up, guys? This is Derek from MorePlaysMoreDates.com. Today, I'm going to be responding to something I saw in Dave Palumbo's uh, Ask Dave segment last week that I felt like should be addressed. Um, Dave is known as a guru in bodybuilding, and he, you know, people take his word as gospel a lot of the time. But this is something that just came up that I just wanted to make a video about because it's a pretty important topic and he's just completely off. So the first question of this was the February 13th uh, segment. The title of the video is Matt most anticipated comeback hashtag ask Dave. So the first question is if Winstrol and Anivar suppress natural testosterone, how do we still make gains on them while taking them alone? And Dave's response to that was this. I don't, I don't believe that Winstrol and Anivar suppress uh, testosterone. Um, so uh, I don't, I haven't seen it in my experience and use uh, with athletes, myself. Also, I, you know, I think a lot of these things are dose related. If you took, you know, the dosage of, of, of Anivar is 20 to 30 milligrams a day, right? But if you're taking 300 milligrams of Anivar a day, it has effects that we're not even aware of. And it might aromatize and it might somehow suppress natural testosterone production. But in the dosages that we recommend, if it does suppress it, it's very small. I don't see it. I see guys doing winch line of our cycles coming off with no PCT and they have no problems whatsoever. So I, I, that's, that's why I recommend that. I recommend you know milder cycles for people who've never taken cycles because why even have to deal with pituitary suppression or testicular suppression? There's no reason. If you took Anivar and Winchell and you still produce your own natural testosterone, then who, who's better than you? you you're going to get a great boost. Uh, you're going to make nice gains because your receptors are so fresh. And there's no reason to start throwing testosterone and equipoise and all those other drugs, Trembolone, in there. Once your body isn't really responding to those weaker drugs, now you can use now you can use stronger drugs, and, and then obviously you're going to have to deal with the PCT and, and turning your body back on. Um, but that that's the reason we do that. And once again, you can go for blood work and, and, and verify. You know, some people do get suppression, but 99% of the people do not, and or if it is, it's very minor. So Dave is saying that. Winstrol and Anivar don't suppress natural testosterone, and if they do, it's minimal, or if they do significantly, then it's because a high dosage above what bodybuilders are using is the dosage being used, which is totally not the case, and I want to credit uh, Victor Black coming up with this uh, data and bringing it to my attention indirectly. Um, he doesn't post a lot on YouTube, but I highly recommend you go find his channel and subscribe or check him out on Facebook. He's a great source of information. But basically, if you look at this study, like I've, first of all, Dave is saying he hasn't seen evidence of it suppressing natural testosterone. I'm like, you're a huge guru who has probably thousands of clients over your lifespan of being a coach. How have you never seen intracycle blood work of a guy on Winstrol that's showing blatant suppression of testosterone? Like literally every single person who takes it is going to see suppression of testosterone. So I don't know how you're saying it. I've never had this in my experience. Like it's in every single person who takes it. So anyways, going to clinical data um, in alteration of hormone levels in normal ma males given the anabolic steroid stenozolol, stenozolol, which is like the official name of Winstrol. Stanozolol, anabolic steroids have widespread metabolic effects, but to date their proven clinical indications have been limited. Recently, the 7 alpha alkylated steroid stanozolol has been shown to be of value in a variety of commonly occurring vascular diseases. Its endocrine effects have received little attention. We have investigated the effect of administering a 14 day course of Winstrol, 10 milligrams orally per day, on a variety of important hormonal pathways in healthy male subjects. So there's nine guys in this study. Um, just healthy guys, you know, run of the mill dudes taking only 10 milligrams a day. So first of all, a guy for a performance enhancing context is probably using more than 10 milligrams a day. So this is not when we're talking about bodybuilding context, I don't really know anyone who's using less than 50 milligrams of oral winstrol. And most guys are using like stupid amounts closer to 75 to hundred per day, um, leading up to contest. So like, even if we're just talking about in a therapeutic context of 10 milligrams per day, which is like 
way lower than what anybody else is using it for. This is what they found in only 14 days. Significant changes changes occurred as follows. A 55% reduction in serum testosterone levels were noted and was accompanied by reductions in derived free testosterone, sex hormone, sex hormone binding globulin, and luteinizing hormone levels. Total T4 and T3 levels fell in association with a decrease in thyroxin binding globulin. Um, changes in vitamin D were also observed and vitamin D binding globulin. These effects were reversible on stopping treatment. Stenozolol uh, therapy therefore leads to a number of hormonal changes, probably by an action at both pituitary and hepatic levels. So I'll link the study below for you guys to look at, but it's like, I don't think I should even need to go into PubMed to pull this statistic up. Like it's pretty obvious if you take an oral only cycle of anabolic steroids in a dose dependent manner, you're going to suppress endocrine function. Like it doesn't matter if you're using Anivar, uh, Winstrol, d Anadrol, they're all going to suppress your endocrine function. So I don't know where he's getting this idea that, oh yeah, the best first cycle is Anivar only or uh, Winstrol only because they barely suppress your testosterone levels. Like literally 10 milligrams a day for 14 days has these guys at down 55%. Like that's significant. So you can only imagine d- tripling the dose, which is what minimum most guys are going to use for an extra four weeks on top of that is going to lead to in a uh, hormonal profile. Like it's d- <laughs> it's not suppression free. It's going to shut you down just the same. So I don't know where he's getting uh, this if it's just like based on the fact that guys aren't reporting like erectile dysfunction, then he assumes that their testosterone levels are fine. Like just cause you can bounce back without a PCT, it doesn't mean that you weren't suppressed on cycle and you might've benefited from post-cycle therapy to ensure that you didn't have any negative ramifications coming off. But anyways, the reason I thought this was important is because a lot of guys might see that and be like, oh, like Winstrol only is super safe and it's not going to suppress. It's not going to suppress me so I can just use it and not have to worry about anything. That's not the case. It's going to shut you down. Anyways, quick video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Talk to you guys soon.